So we also have a question from a viewer. We'll probably come back to the unemployment fund thing, I'm sure, before we're done. But we also have a question from a viewer who wants to talk about the frontline worker um, compensation issue, um, the issue that, that was highlighted by uh, Representative Schultz's comments earlier. So let's start with you, Representative Rasmussen. There do appear to be some differences of opinion about who should be included in that and how much and um, uh, what is your perspective on that and what do you think uh, the final result, setting aside the question about whether it's linked to the UI bill or not, what should we be doing about the frontline worker uh, compensation issue? The floor is yours to start with anyway. So last session, uh, there was bipartisan agreement on $250 million uh, to be set aside for frontline workers. And for me, those dollars ought to be focused on uh, individuals who really had to shoulder uh, the worst parts of the pandemic. In the community that I represent, long-term care has been a big issue and uh, Representative Schultz has really highlighted that uh, in her Human Services Committee. And for me, you know, that, that should really be the priority. Uh, the individuals who are working in long-term care are nurses, first responders, uh, people who were, were truly on the front lines of this pandemic is where we should uh, be prioritizing the dollars. And you know, I think um, the legislators would love to include everyone, but the issue with that is then you dilute the amount of money that you're able to give to each of the work or workers, and especially with the workforce crisis that long-term care and healthcare is currently facing, I think uh, you know, having something meaningful for those workers uh, could help um, keep people in the industry when we are in desperate need of uh, having those frontline workers um, be in those key industries. Representative Schultz, health, this is healthcare economics, I guess. That's a piece of this too. Uh, what's your response to the uh, uh, comments from Representative Rasmussen and the general subject of what should that frontline worker bill look like? I think it should be as comprehensive as possible. So it needs to include not just folks working in long-term care, but folks that were working in our hospitals that were also at the front line of the pandemic, trying to save people's lives and keep people healthy and people who are working in retail to keep our food shelves stocked, um, people who are teaching our children. So there are a lot of frontline workers that deserve this bonus pay and we should get it out there as fast as possible. We did try to help long-term care facilities by pushing out hundreds of millions of dollars already for them to retain and attract workers. Senator Hoffman, uh, well, let me, Senator, let me, Senator, let's go to Senator Howe. Um, we've had you batting clean up here, Senator Howe. Why don't you talk a little bit about the the frontline worker bill and uh, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on that? We can't hear you. You have to turn your sound on there. I have to turn it back on, but we should give uh, Senator Hoffman a chance to hit a home run here instead of always leaving me to to, to have the swing at the bat. But uh, you know, I. I firmly agree that we need to take care of those folks that that have been actually upfront and personal with the COVID, with the uh, people working in the hospitals, people working in uh, nursing homes, but we're forgetting those folks that work in group homes and those settings. Uh, those folks need to be included in this piece. And uh, I believe the 250 million, I think it was about $1,300 a piece, took care of those folks in group homes took care of those folks in uh, nursing homes, took care of the nurses, took care of firefighters, EMTs. And I think th and the, those are the folks that worked every day, dealt with people with COVID and were really involved with it. So I, I truly believe those are the people that we intended when we first started talking about frontline workers. Uh, but you know what, if we wanna do more Let's have a conversation and put all the money on the table and and figure it out and have all the proposals out there and figure out how we're going to do this and how we do the most help and provide the most benefit for the most people. I'm all for that. And I think the Senate would support that. Senator Hoffman. Now yeah, you're batting Jeff, cleanup. Go ahead. I'm going to bad cleanup on Jeffrey. So the, the, the thing is, Back in, in August and then in November, in November is when they had the proposals, and, and Senator Howe is, is right on. There's disagreements on the whole thing on eligibility, and there's agreements on on where it goes. But he's highlighting something that, that really needs to also be talked about. Those frontline workers that are working in our, 
our group homes, those people that are helping are most vulnerable in the state of Minnesota, right? I agree with Senator Holland that they need to be included in that because they've not had a pay increase. Matter of fact, McDonald's in Burnsville starting pay is 21 bucks an hour, and yet our rate methodology reimbursement rate for folks working uh, on in the trenches is $14.70 or something. It's just, you know, ridiculous. I mean, that's how people are ge- being paid. And it's disappointing, Barry, that you had a whole group of folks. It was bipartisan across across the line, right? And, and to me, if you're driving toward a win-win or you're trying to get to a consensus or, or get to what's right for people in the state of Minnesota, that means you got to do a couple things. And, and, and I've said this before, you got to leave your ego out in the hallway. You got to just dump that ego in the hallway and you got to have a conversation about what's the task at hand. And in this case, who are the folks that should be benefiting from the fact that they suffered during this process and we owe them a little bit to say thank you. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, there it is. I'm publicly going to agree with Senator Jeff Howe. There you go, Jeff. Put that one in the books, will you? But I think we're conflating two things. There's the bonus pay that we want to get out as fast as possible. And then there's this whole huge workforce shortage crisis in group homes, in healthcare, in other industries. And there is a lot we need to do. And it's going to take more than one year to solve that workforce crisis. And it's going to take more than just raising wages. But we have heard lots of great proposals in my committee and others to increase reimbursement rates so that wages can be increased in those critical caring professions. 